All right, YouTube. I was uh, posting in a reloading group on Facebook recently, and there's a couple people that wanted a video of how my setup works. Um, firstly, I want to make sure that everybody knows I'm not an expert electrician or anything like that. I'm not a ballistician. I make no claims to knowing what I'm actually doing. I like reloading, and part, part of that is tinkering. So as you can see, I got some stuff going on here. This is an induction and kneeling machine that I more or less used a thread on sniper side to kind of get the ideas for and construct. Um, there's some things that I would probably do different next time because I don't feel like this setup is completely optimized, but it works pretty good. When you're kneeling, You're going to want to make sure and get some other items like Tempelac in order to, so you can read what temperatures you're reaching with your uh, annealing machine. So there's a couple of them right here. They look like this. We got a uh, 1000, an 1150, and a 700. Uh, you can get them on like McMaster Car or Amazon will have them sometimes, but usually people get a 750. These ones people are going to tell you it's too high, but there's another link that I'm going to post along with the Sniper Side article down in the description. Where a guy, he's a, I don't know, material engineer, I guess, or he, he's a metallurgist, and he goes through how most hobbyists don't get their brass hot enough for long enough in order to make the case neck and shoulders anneal properly. So, there's a couple different stages of annealing I have here. This is, we're gonna start with a completely non-annealed case. As you can see, it's just pretty standard. It's kind of dirty, whatever. These are all PMC cases, by the way. This one is, you can see, it's a little annealed up here on the shoulder and the neck. This is a factory PMC case. It still has the uh, primer, original primer in it with the sealant. And you can see how far down the case that annealing goes. It actually goes less than mine. Mine barely hits the shoulder junction for the body. This is a case I purposely kind of destroyed. Um, I annealed it for about a half a second too long. The timer on my annealer goes down to 0.1 second, so I can kind of have the resolution in order to uh, control and have it consistent, which is the key. I used to do the flame torch thing with a drill bit, and uh, it's, it was hard to control the depth of the brass in the flame, at least by hand. Uh, the, the companies like Anneli's uh, Bench Source, they've pretty much solved that issue. But I'm after kind of as, most, as much consistency as I can get. This is a case that I threw a bunch of Tempelac on. This is a 700 Tempelac. This is the 1150. And then the 1000 right here. As you can see, the 1000 kind of started to turn back into a liquid which is when it hits its temperature and you see the 1150 started turning right here at the neck right at the neck shoulder junction and so what you're going to do is you're going to use a case like this with your temple lock on it to set your times each case is going to be different thickness by brand you're going to get more consistency out of brands like lapua obviously right now i'm using a brand called jagam and sporting brass and it seems to be pretty consistent it's not as consistent as Lapua but it is better than you know Winchester and uh, Federal or it seems to be <clears throat> so the other processes you might look into again are the propane torch the salt bath method which is basically you take a Lee lead pot and you melt a bunch of salt in it basically to get up to almost a thousand degrees and then you can dip your case in it 
And then the last method is an induction. I'm sure there's other ways that people do it, but those are the three main methods to anneal your brass. Now, the amp annealers are over a thousand dollars. Those are probably the best induction methods out there. This is in no way an amp annealer and not nearly to the quality, <laughs> obviously. Um, but there's other ones. There's a uh, Fluxion makes one called the Little Annie, I think. Um, and then you can go on like Accurate Shooter and uh, Sniper Side and get more ideas for kind of homemade setups. The reason why I didn't want to use a torch anymore was because I have a pretty small garage and I have a pretty small bench and having an open flame on a bench top that's made of MDF and, car and plywood with 20 pounds of powder on it or near it, it just doesn't seem very safe to me. So the induction method, I can get this coil to basically melt the piece of brass, but I can still touch it because we're water cooled in here. And so the way this works is, Okay, plug it in and I'll just, I'll grab a case here. And these aren't overly clean or anything. Just drop it in, you want to get it about halfway. As you can see it's about halfway down. about halfway down the case there, or you're about halfway up in the coil. We'll just press a button and it'll anneal on its own. And when it's done it comes out and it all should be right about the same. As you can see. There you go. Obviously, it's, they are a little hot when they come out. We'll just do another one just so you can see. It's pretty much, it's a fairly easy process at this point. There's no, there's no drill that you have to deal with. There's no torch that you have to control the depth on or anything like that. And they all come out pretty much exactly the same. So you want it you want your heat to propagate just a little bit below the shoulder junction there on the body. Not too much further down because then you start annealing you know the web of the case down here at the bottom if you're annealing the web of the case or you know when you start getting down to the body that's when you start getting into you know you might have some issues. As you can see with this case here I've annealed significantly further down the body of the case. I'm not obviously not going to use this one. I was able to squish this thing shut with just easily with a pair of pliers, and it's still really easy to squish. This one, not quite so much. So we've still got enough strength there. And according to the Temple Act, we're not getting below, we're not getting above uh, 700 on the body of the case. So that's kind of ideal. That's where you want to be. Now the way this works is. Camera over here. So I have a water cooled coil and the way that the coil works with the water cooling is you can I can literally right now I'm touching the coil and it's not gonna burn me but if I was using my older solid copper coil it, it, there'd be no way you could touch it. And the reason why I went water cooling was just so that it would be a little easier to use in that aspect where I don't have this really hot thing sticking out of the front of my annealer. I'm using a 24 volt, uh, 360 watt to 15 amp power supply for like LED or computers or whatever, some kind of, uh, just any kind of AC to DC switchable power supply. And then in the bottom down there is my induction board. It's got a fan on it because I blew up my first board by getting it too hot. So I learned that lesson and wanted to use a fan to keep everything as cool as possible. You notice my radiator has a fan too. And there's even a fan in the back of my unit. 
mounted to the back that I don't have on right now because it's really loud. But all of it stays pretty cool. So you simply just dump a case in, try to get it centered. Ideally I'd have something a little bit better to center it, but and then press the button, you can see it count down. In order to run the 12 volt system that I have over here, I have this converter. It's a step down buck converter that I have. It's pretty much going at eight volts right now to run the pump back here. I could run it to 12, but the pump starts to cavitate around like 10. So I ran it at eight just because I'm getting enough flow because the restriction on this flow is going to be the coil, being that it's a 1 8 inch copper line. It's rather small, so if you go too big, you're going to need to adjust your power supply and your induction board to compensate for the larger wire, or the larger, in this case, larger copper tubing. You can see down here, I just have some compression fittings for the for the copper and then all this stuff is on Amazon and I'll put links to all of it on Amazon I literally built this whole thing with that um, with stuff from Amazon so uh, the, it's uh, the coolant is 50 50 just normal water and water water and then that's pretty much it the whole setup really isn't too bad it runs about you know a case every 10 seconds because I got to take it out put it in but I mean you can automate them to go a lot faster if you want I really only ever do about a hundred to 200 cases at a time so it's not really a big deal to sit in the garage for a little bit and just anneal some cases so uh, I'm gonna probably upgrade some other stuff with like a push-pull solenoid so I can drop cases out of the bottom and then all I have to do is manually feed them in the top and I'm probably gonna rebuild my little box because I kind of want to have a little more airflow I'm still kind of nervous about blowing up the board like I did on the last one it just one of the uh, one of the circuits on there just popped and it stopped annealing it didn't like catastrophically explode or anything like that it was just one of those where like it's just not annealing cases anymore so what's the problem so I figured out that it had blown up one of the uh, transformers in there or whatever and then I just had to replace the little board down here but other than that everything's pretty cheap I think you could probably get into this thing for under two hundred dollars with water cooling and all the other stuff if you wanted to go with like a higher wattage board and power supply you'll be able to anneal faster and get this get similar results um, the advantage to annealing faster in this case would be that your heat is going to propagate down the case less so you can anneal it still just as far you know down the case but the heat won't end up down at the web or into the body of the case as much because you're getting it done faster. So that's pretty much you know the little bit that I have on this thing. It's really not a complex system as I would have initially thought. I'm not that good with electronics so for me to be able to do this is means like pretty much anybody can do this. It's not a very hard thing. And because it times down to point 0.1 second you're as long as you're getting consistent depth in the coil you'll be getting a pretty consistent anneal time as well anyway uh, if you have any questions just post them in the comments or find the threads on Facebook that I did and I'll try to elaborate as much as I can it's not too complex really but um, I can go in a little more in depth into how it's constructed if people want we'll kind of take it all back apart and put it back together kind of thing I'm going to probably redo the wiring anyway just to clean it up a little bit because it's kind of a cluster kind of a rat's nest right now but it works and that's kind of all that matters but uh, I'll post links to 
the build forum or the build uh, thread on Sniper Side, and then I'll post a link to that annealing page where the uh, uh, metaller just talks about how annealing, you know, works in cartridge brass and stuff. And then um, I'll try to get all the links to uh, the parts on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching.